Hi again, everyone. Welcome to a very, very giantly special episode of Dev Men Talk. Um, I bring to you today a guest who um, has been one of my favourite guests. And I'm not, again, I'm not just saying this because he's in the room, but one of my favourite guests from across all of my series that I've gotten to speak to in the last few years. And I, uh, I just, there were reasons why I just had to bring him on to Dead Men Talk. So any fans of Once Upon a Turnbuckle will probably already recognise the face and the name. Uh, but for those who don't, get ready because you, you, this guy's got some stories to share. Um, I welcome former professional wrestler, um, competed as Giant Warrior, Big Tiger Steel. Um, also author as well, publisher, which is why he's here today, Jeff Beard. And welcome to the show, mate. Oh, thanks. It's great to be back. Yeah, it's, it's been, I had to look this morning how long it was um, uh, since we last spoke. It's been longer, a couple of years. Longer than I thought. So it was a good 18 months. Yeah, I think it was the beginning of last year that we that we spoke. And uh, it was, I think, I keep going back. I've, I've, I've done a few, I've dipped into a few of my episodes and pulled out like my favorite moments and stuff to stick on my social media. And there were a few that I picked out from yours and I was watching it back and it was just <laughs> brought back so many great, you know, the stories you shared. Uh, it's always still here with one of my favorite interviews. So uh, it's- Glad it's, you enjoyed the last one. Oh, it's fantastic. It's great to have you back to talk about more as well. So so um, anyone who's watching this who may not be familiar with Once Upon a Turnbuckle, which is my wrestling um, themed show, um, I've already spoken to Jeff about your- very colorful wrestling career um so <laughs> I, will, the I, I will refer people usually the color of red really but um i'll refer people back to uh, episode 15 of once upon a turnbuckle if after this you want to find out even more but just to kind of kick things off to set the scene then jeff just give people out there a flavor of your your career in a nutshell if you can as best you can as a professional wrestler sort of because you know that kind of will feed in hopefully to other things we're going to talk about well, I, I started in 1987, so I mean that was you know a completely different era as far as wrestling was concerned, and the style of wrestling was a lot different when I first started than what you see on television today. Yeah, um, I spent most of my career wrestling overseas. You know, I worked in over 25 different countries. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I like the international scene a little bit more than what I did things that were going in the you know, going on in the States. I think one of the big reasons why I liked it so much is a lot of the international people stuff still believed in wrestling and stuff. They still, you know, thought that it was, uh, it was a hundred percent real and it wasn't, you know, the, the sports entertainment part of it of what it is today. Mm. So, you know, I kind of traveled around the world for about 31 years and stuff till I retired in 2017 it's quite a career then really i mean over the span of that and and again what i know of what your career entailed you know some of the some of the guys that you're up against you may not have been up there on the uh you know the bright lights of, on the tv every week for wwe or wcw or anything like that but i mean you shared the ring with some some of the some major names that people will know oh yeah um and the experiences you got from there um uh, I'm trying not to peek too soon because we will come back to your wrestling career because it, it links into to a bit of work that you've done recently. Um, but I, I, I think you're one of the guys that I that's really given me a bit of an education into a an era and a side of wrestling that I I didn't really grow up with. So I've learned a lot yeah. through through you know the stories you've shared with me before um, and just how how brutal that style of wrestling was that wasn't on TV. It really was yeah. back then and stuff is a lot more violent than what you see today. A lot more blood, yeah. you know, it was, and I was involved with a lot of bloody matches and stuff with, you know, people like Abdullah the butcher and, Just, you know, we, we always had blood everywhere and stuff whenever yeah. we wrestled each other. I so, I mean, that was, but it's, you don't see blood and stuff that much anymore. And, no. and to me, and so I think we, there were times and stuff that we were probably overdoing it and stuff back in my days. Mm. But there's times and stuff that I feel like and stuff is it's necessary. Yeah. You know, for, I mean, when you're doing cage matches and things like that stuff, being having your face run into that steel cage and stuff. I mean, it's common sense is just going to tell you and stuff, you know, you're going to bleed on something like that if it's, yeah. you know, 100 percent legitimate and stuff. So when they don't stuff, it kind of takes away some from the. That's it. They, I, the I, match. I, 
I'm, I'm very, very quite removed now from the current, what I call the current product. Um, but I see from time to time they are still, they're trying to bring back these sort of traditional ones where you've got things like you know, NXT trying to do war games and they do cage matches and that. But there's so many, almost like so many blockers now over what they can and can't do. It, exactly that. Right. It really does lose the kind of, you know, the real. Well, all that's because of the sponsors. Yeah. You know, the, the sponsors don't really want to be. You know, toy companies and stuff like that don't want to be caught up with all the blood and guts and stuff of the, no. you know, the 80s and no. early 90s and stuff of wrestling and stuff. So that's kind of put a big damper on everything because we didn't have that much television to have to worry about sponsors. No, that's true. that's true. You know, now that everything's global and stuff, you've got, you know, the sponsors are having a little bit more to say in what's, what the programming is. Yeah, yeah. You you reminded me of something there that I didn't ask you last time. It did come to mind. Action figures. Did you have you got one of yourself made to my? I swear I've seen a picture of a giant warrior. I have yeah. some. Yeah. That, uh, but it was something that uh, an artist and stuff in Mexico and stuff did for oh, me. Okay. He did. Um, he did me an action figure of every character that I did throughout my career. Okay. Cool. So that was kind of a nice thing and stuff to do. It was, you know, through a podcast and stuff that I had done in Mexico. Oh, let's go. Let's go. So, yeah, I've got I've got some. You know, all my stuff was basically Mexican made. That's cool. So, you know, I never had the big things that were in Toys R Us or Walmart. No, or, but, you know, for wrestling collectors these days, they're the kind of things that I think were very sought after now because everyone could lay their hands on Hasbro and Jackson. Right. And the Galoob figures that, you know, everyone had. But I think, yeah, you're, those kind of things are like the gems now of trying to get your hands on. So what, was it one in supply? Were they made specifically for you or were they? No, they were they were made specifically for me. They were. Yeah, that's good. That's good. yeah they had taken um, the four different basic characters that I had throughout my career and stuff. They had taken and done an action figure for each one. Yeah, okay. okay. So now I've kind of got that put together and stuff in a... That's a cool display. It's got a really shadow cool. box along with my uh, my plaque and stuff from being put in the Southern Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. And there you go. There you go. So, you know, just goes to show that work that you do, it may not be on TV all the time, but it gets recognized within the industry when you, when you, uh, you, you know, there's governing bodies like that in the halls of fame that will include. Well, you know, it was, and, it's yeah. funny and stuff, you know, with things in the States, you know, I never had that big, television career and stuff that a lot of the the bigger names and stuff have had here in the states yeah you know so fans and stuff would just be like well you, i haven't seen you on television and stuff so what did you do yeah you know or what could you have done and stuff if you weren't on you know if you weren't on television yeah you know and i guess one of the biggest things that i always prided myself is is every international tour that i did i was always invited back a second time yeah yeah. So, I mean, I felt like I must have done something right for them to keep wanting to bring me back. Well, you had quite a following as well in the you countries know. that you went in. I mean, you know, whether whether they they were hating you or whether they loved you, I mean, you did your job by the sounds of it. Um, they mostly but, hated me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. think out of almost 31 years and stuff, I was probably the good guy or baby face and stuff yeah. five or six years of it. Right. Okay. The rest of stuff, I was always the the heel and the big bad guy for everywhere I went. What, what did you prefer? I guess I, I enjoyed working. I enjoyed being the bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it's a lot easier for somebody my size to piss off the crowd mm, than yeah. it is for me to try to get sympathy from them. That's true. Because you know, there's there's not that many guys out there and stuff that are size wise to what I was. No. You know, so when you're that much bigger than what the than what the heels you were working with was, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder for me to get sympathy out of people because they always figure, well, you're bigger than that guy is and stuff. You should be able to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. But then when you take me and flip it, yeah. now I said, I'm so much bigger and stuff than what everybody else is. And going into foreign countries, you know, I was the American, the evil American guy coming in. Mm -hmm. So when somebody my size and stuff just went out of my way and stuff to to cheat and bring break the rules and use you know different kind of tactics, it's, you know it, it was just easier for me and stuff that way. Yeah, people aren't going to get a, a feel for how big you are on the screen here. So just so as height wise, what are you? I'm legitimately seven foot. 
you now, most of the places where I worked and stuff, I was billed at seven two, seven three. Sounded a bit more on didn't they? Yeah. You, you know, see. and um, most of the places I was. 380, 400 pounds and stuff advertised, and I was about 350, 360. Yeah. But I mean, when you've got, you have us elevated up in a ring and at a distance and stuff, it makes us look bigger than what we actually are. Yeah, so that's why we were able to get by with those extra couple of pounds, extra couple of inches and stuff, because yeah. nobody's walking around with the tape measure and stuff trying <laughs> to, you know, run up and beside me to see how tall I actually am. And if they're doing that with everyone, then I mean, it's just relative anyway. You, you were in the ring with Andre the Giant. I've got to bring that up because right. that obviously that's 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 a big thing. Even I think wrestling fans. Well, and Andre and stuff. Andre, Andre really wasn't that much taller than I am. No, I was going to say. Yeah, you know, he was maybe an inch, half an inch. Yeah, you were probably the, the videos that I've seen of that, which which you can you can find on YouTube. Yeah, it was it was. A struggle almost seeing him not being that towering figure that we were right seeing. yeah because they always booked it you know andre was seven four four seventy four from time i was a little kid mm. you know when i saw him the first time at maybe 10 years old and stuff until i wrestled against him you know on down the road you know once i would hit seven foot myself then I, it was easy to tell and stuff he's he wasn't seven four no no no, but that was one know. reason why a lot of people booked me taller than what I, you know, than what I actually was because they had booked so many other people. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I've seen Undertaker and stuff that was booked at seven foot tall and stuff and he's six nine. Yeah. So if you put him, if you put him in the ring with me when I'm a legit seven, yeah. then you've got to bump me up that two or three inches and stuff too to compensate for the size difference. Definitely. And that was always a difficult thing, Yeah. you know, for promoters. Yeah, I can imagine that. I can imagine. And um, so let's kind of we've, we've kind of set the scene there for, for, you know, again, anyone who wants to delve into some of the other fantastic stories, go check out the, the other interview I did with you last year. So let's talk about what your life outside, your life and other ventures outside of the ring. Um, a 30 odd year career in the ring. So I guess a lot of what you were doing outside was running alongside it. Um, right. From what I yeah, I mean, while I was doing it, you know, while I was in the middle of the wrestling, you know, I was, you know, I, I did some bodyguarding work along the way. I did a movie with Dolph Lundgren. Um, just you know, so just different, <laughs> different, <laughs> different things and stuff that I was doing on the side and stuff when I, you know, when I had off time or downtime and stuff, you know, then I had other projects and stuff that I could get involved with. Yeah. Yeah, and you know now and stuff. My wife and I own a, a public relations company and a publishing company, yeah, so yeah. that uh, definitely keeps us busy. So the, the publishing world, obviously, obviously to say very very different than the wrestling world. I would imagine there may be similarities. Oh there, yeah, sure. but what kind of initially when you went into what what steered you into that direction? You know, back when the. The, the wrestling business or the publishing from the from the, from the wrestling into the publishing on the public relations um company. well mainly and stuff i help my wife mm -hmm. more than anything else and stuff so i mean i just do what she tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know help her where i can We're with you on she's that. really busy yeah she's yeah. really busy with everything and stuff so i just try to help along the way and stuff where i can and cool you know, a lot of times and stuff i end up um I do a lot of the invoicing and everything like that, the, the right. accounting side of things for our companies. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, because because I was quite interested. I in sort of you know the publishing side, I've kind of dabbled into you know just to give a little bit of my background because I don't think we've ever really spoken to it between us. But I um uh, I became a published author back in 2015. I've done. A mix of independent publishers oh. who've done it for me, and I've done a mix of you know self-publishing and that. So I've kind of seen both sides. The difficulties of, I think, publishing your own stuff. Um, I mean, do you, prior to your book, which we will come on to shortly, have you had any other works that you've 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 written, either for yourself or for others? Have you all been taking other people's work and putting out? A lot of our work and stuff will come through. Uh, we do a lot of ghostwriting. Oh, okay. So I mean, yeah. clients and stuff, you know, we do the writing for them, but they claim and stuff that they wrote everything on their own. That's what really yeah. intrigued me. We'll come back to that. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I mean, that's, that's one of the things and stuff that, you know, our, most of our publishing company stuff with Clarence Publishing is done that way. Right. Now, at large PR and stuff is our public relations company. And that one, 
you know, we do all sorts of stuff with them. We've worked, you know, to get people into various things like ESPN, okay. Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes, Sports Illustrated, wow. Ellen DeGeneres Show. You know, so, I mean, we've had a lot of high profile placements and stuff for our clients. That's very cool. Are you, do you, um, the, I've got to ask them the ghostwriting thing. I have kind of, you know, thought being someone who's obviously always written my own stuff in that, what, what are the reasons necessarily that people would come to you? Okay. They've got an idea, but they would want you to write it. You know, what, what kind of you know, time, time is always a big thing. You know, they may not always, they've got the ideas for things, but they don't have the time to sit down and write it all out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, so if you contact us and use one of our ghostwriters for things, then, you know, they will call and stuff and they'll just go over for an hour or two and stuff and they'll just go through various things, Yeah, you know, about your life and what you want to tell in your books and stuff. And then we'll, you know, our writers and stuff will do the research behind it and putting everything together and stuff. We just, you know, clients just give us a question and answer kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, as soon as a chapter is finished and stuff, then, you know, we we edit that, which my wife does all the editing and stuff herself for the company. Wow. Um, and she just, she just got through editing a 250,000 word um, doc, a book and stuff that's a thousand pages. Jeez. So, so yeah, she does all the editing and stuff that goes through the company and stuff for the most part. And we all but, know that's the bit we hate the most so oh sure fair play to her for, that's, that's, yeah she's that's she's nice. really good stuff with what she does and stuff but she always impresses me regularly on different things <laughs> that, you know ideas she comes up with or things that she's done or yeah. things she's accomplished and things so it's you know it's always nice to stuff to see her success yeah no, that's that's really cool I, feel, I may be having a word with you after this <laughs> about you know about other things so um um so your have you have you prior to writing obviously your own story, so we'll build towards that, but have you have you wanted to write anything before, you know, besides your story? So anything nonfiction, fiction, anything like that? Um, towards yeah, actually and stuff that we've got uh, you know, my book on myself and my wrestling career and stuff just launched day before yesterday. Congratulations, but brother. You know, since since that was all written and in production and everything, you know, I've uh, done two books with my wife cool. as well that have yet to be published. So we'll be getting those out sometime beginning of next year. Brilliant. Cool, cool. One's on public relations. Yeah. And the other one's and the other one and stuff is how to write a book. Oh, wow. OK. It's going to be invaluable, really. So, that. yeah, we're, you know, we're excited about them. So, you know, I've done other stuff outside of just the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah the wrestling business the, the public relations bit are we because uh, i've seen you you do obviously a lot of like mo is it motivational speaking public speaking i've done motivational speaking um you know last time that we talked and stuff you know we had talked said so my health hasn't been real good the last um three or four years you know i got diagnosed with parkinson's so i had a lot of problems for a couple of years with the parkinson's to where i was stumbling and falling all over the place and uh -huh lost a lot of weight and stuff. I had dropped down to like 260 pounds, Wow! you know, for somebody that used to stay, you know, 325, 350 and stuff yeah. for several years. Yeah. You know, it was kind of, I looked anemic and stuff when I well, started dropping. Your height as well. that's, that's really right. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, I've got a great doctor for my Parkinson's and she's helped me a lot as far as, you know, keeping me on a good medical regimen and, right. and everything else. And then, you know, that's, I've had to deal with diabetes and stuff, which I've now kind of got my diabetes and stuff under control. Brilliant. You know, I got put on an insulin pump and stuff about a month ago. So, I mean, okay. that's keep my insulin levels good. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I've had a lot of health issues, but I mean, I'm getting better. That's good. You know, things are starting to, you know, work for me now to where I'm a little more on top of things and stuff yeah. as to where I was before. That's good. That's good. Did you you find when you were out publicly going out and speaking in public and that that you immediately commanded attention because of either people knew you from what you were doing before or you you know your physical aura someone your size from you know, the ones that knew me as a wrestler and stuff that had its effect but a lot of it and stuff uh, was just because of my size yeah people yeah. aren't used to seeing people as big as I am no 
No, and I think you it know, so makes I mean, you listen, doesn't it, really? If you... <laughs> it does. It, it demands attention a little bit more and stuff because of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm seven foot, and there's only 2,800 people in the world and stuff that are seven foot or taller. Wow. So, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's so being able to do that, and I mean, I did – I like talking to kids in high schools and stuff. Unfortunately, there wasn't just a lot of money involved with that. So it was right. kind of a labor of love for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then my health started getting bad. So I wasn't able to do it. But I mean, I also did, uh, you know, uh, became a certified happiness coach. So I mean, I did, you know, some happiness coach, you know, happiness speeches. Some, I did some Christian testimonials. Okay. I uh, did uh, some talks and stuff on being unique. Yeah. Which you know, sure you would, you would yeah, correct. exactly. So I was able to play off. I was able yeah. to play off myself and stuff. But I mean, no two people are exactly alike. No. Even twins, you know, they've Thank each you. got their own. They've each got their own characteristics and stuff. This set makes them unique from yeah. their twin. I've got to, I've got twins. I can totally vouch for that. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, we we're definitely seeing that. They're that age, uh, sort of eight and a half, and you can definitely see that they they are their own people and they'll be they'll be as tight as anything at times they'll be at each other's throats and necks you see they do clash um they just need their own space to really just be what they want to be right yeah, they kind of stifle each other at times yeah it's kind of got to be tough i would think for twins always being lumped together and stuff mm -hmm. you know instead of being an individual you're a twin yeah exactly i mean yeah, least, i've heard it from other people i've known that were you know part of a tw being twins yeah. and stuff they said being being able to be their own unique self without being lumped into mm. being a part of a twin set. Yeah. 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 And they said that was always a hard part, but they always tried to do that. We still, you know? we're guilty of that, you know, just collectively, whenever we're talking about them, we do refer to them as the twins. I, I catch myself doing that. I don't want to be putting, you know, keeping that label on them, but I mean, it's their thing as well. I mean, they do love it. I, they're, they're, you know, they're born a girl, so they've got their own, identities anyway you know it's not like okay oh, yeah worse if they were identical but um but even so they they they're carving their way in the world they'll they'll definitely be there'll be no um no doubts about them speaking their minds and you know sticking up for each other and themselves i'll tell you that so. right <laughs> but um so really it's complete you know night and day between the kind of things that you've been doing that you've been talking about there where you've been you know doing happiness coaching and and motivational speaking and that to what you were like in the in the ring really because right. the character that you portrayed for most of your career was was out there to really create as they term it heat with the fans right you know, and, and, and and sort of pulling on that when you came around to wanting to write your book then you know telling your story Firstly, would anything that you've learned in your other sort of walks of life around that, would, has any of that changed your perspective on anything that's happened in your wrestling I think, career? I think it did a little on how I kind of looked back at my wrestling career and stuff. I think, you know, what I do now is, is kind of opened the doors for me to look at different things. And I see my career a little bit different. And, you know, I see the whole industry and stuff with a lot with a little bit different light than what I did before. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, obvious question I suppose anything that you when you sat down to, to to pick you know the stories that would make the cut almost was there was there anything that you kind of looked back on and you had any regrets about um that you know was a part of your career you had to write about but something you necessarily wanted to go back and do differently um I think one of the biggest things where I can really put my finger on something is I had just come under the radar and stuff of WWF at the time and I got the opportunity to go to South Africa and work in the wrestling office there. Yeah. And so I moved to South Africa for five years, which kind of took me off the radar. Yeah. Okay. So by the time I came back and you know, I was working for Shawn Michaels company in San Antonio, Texas, when he was out for a while mm -hmm. and my age suddenly became an issue and stuff because I wasn't you know, in my twenties and stuff. I was in my late, you know, I was getting in my late thirties, early forties. Yeah. And so they were, you know, it really kind of almost. became said, well, you're, you're getting too old. Yeah. Okay. And I, I didn't really understand it, but you know, I understood that one of the young guys that they could kind of groom and That's, make them yeah. into the, whatever character they wanted. And I was pretty well established. My, you know, I was pretty well set in my ways by then. Yeah. 
yeah would you um do, would you have seen yourself if you if you had made it there you know to one of the big two remaining of the character you were sort of you know giant warrior or big tiger still to, to have taken one of those characters with you or you know, if they would have taken it, I would. But I mean, I would have adapted to whatever they wanted yeah, me to. Yeah, you wouldn't have been one to sort of dig your heels and say it's that or nothing. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, I wasn't that set. You know, that I, this is what I have to do. I have to be what I've been in the past. Yeah. And I mean, they were. You know, WWE was always big about change, not really acknowledging what other people did in their past careers or where they had been. Yeah. You know, so I know that they would have changed everything up. Yeah. Had I gone in there. Especially if you didn't have that with a lot of the fans, you wouldn't have had that recognition. They could have got away with that rather than them taking, right. you know, someone who they'd already been watching on the other channel and make out. I mean, in a way, I I used to I used to think that was quite insulting as a wrestling fan, is that you kind of we know who this guy is, and you're basically oh, yeah. just trying to make out that he's someone completely different. Um, but you know, some of them ran with it. Some some of them did, you know, develop more. I say remarkable identities when they made that change. Right. So, you know, something like Dustin Rhodes springs to mind. I think the first time I saw what they were doing with him in WWF, I was ready to stop watching, but it became the best thing almost, I think, that he did. You know, with, yeah, with the Goldust character. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. I'm doing it. So, so let's introduce the book. Sorry, we haven't actually done okay. that. <laughs> so your fantastic book. So it's called uh, Man Behind the Makeup. The Man Behind the Makeup. Yeah, it, it covered um, like all the different characters and stuff that I did throughout my throughout my career. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the relationships that I had. You know, my relationship with Yokozuna, and you know, we were we were really close and stuff because we spent a lot of time in Mexico together before he ever started doing the Yokozuna character. Yeah. So I mean, that was in in a way that was kind of tough going back over all that again and stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, I guess there's probably not a day go by that I don't think about him, but you know, just having to rehash all of that stuff it yeah. was a little tough at times. Yeah, yeah, and that was I think one of the one of the, the the most sort of sobering stories I think you shared last time was with the fact you were on the the same tourism over in the UK when unfortunately yeah, I, he was the one who wanted me to come with him on that one. Yeah. We had just come off of a tour to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And he called and asked and stuff if I was had open dates and if I wanted to come with him and you know us hanging out together made the whole tour worth going to do. So yeah, yeah. So at least I suppose you were one of the ones who was there with him yeah. at the end. So you know, yeah. When obviously his family. Yeah, I was the one who helped get him home. Yeah. You know the the promoter over in England and stuff didn't really do anything to help us and stuff. So you know I had to contact the family and you know, help his sister and stuff when she came over to claim the body and, mm. you know, call Rikishi and, you know, talk to the different members of the family off of her and, yeah. you know, so yeah, that was, that was a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you know, yeah. Having, having that, having to retell that, I can imagine was, uh, was just kind of start was, things up again. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. I suppose not something that probably you put away completely and then you've got to try and, I mean, did you have with some of the stories that you you did put in here? Um, I mean, did you already know when you sat down the ones that you you wanted to include? Are there, are there any that you want that you knew you wanted to omit from some uh, version of it? There's other stories I wished I'd added, hmm. but they didn't really come to mind until after the book was written. And it's like, oh, I should have told that one, <laughs> or oh, I remember this. And so I didn't think about it at the time. So, so I mean, there there's other stories in there in me somewhere. Hmm. You know that didn't go into the book. Well, uh, we will look forward to um, to another edition. No pressure. Or anything. Yeah, who, who knows and stuff. Maybe we'll get there's a second book and stuff in me. Yeah. Well, I I was fortunate. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to to read it ahead of time, and it was one that I I couldn't wait. I mean, you had mentioned it to me a while ago. I think I don't know if you touched. No, it wasn't when we spoke. It was it was I think when I contacted you just afterwards. Because I had a similar project myself, which still hasn't really lifted. And you mentioned then, and I knew as soon as there was a, a Jeff Beard and book coming out, I had to read it. And then, you know, you gave me the opportunity to read it. And I, I did just devour it, even though I already knew part of your story. I think it was, there's so much stuff in there that you you included that we didn't touch on. And like you just said, there's obviously a lot more. 30-year wrestling career, you can't wrap up, I don't feel, in 
Yeah, exactly. And stuff. I mean, like, you know, like I said, there were several things that came to mind after everything was done that, you know, oh, I should have added and, mm. you know, things like that. But it, you know, if they if we look at doing a second one, if the first book does well and stuff, you know, yeah. Yeah. I can add them to, to something new. Have you got any, um, any sort of, you know, plans of getting out there and, um, and promoting it sort of in person now that the world's opened up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we're going to, uh, well, it helps that my wife is my publicist. So, okay. you know, I kind of got an insight. Out, out of diary. I like that. So. But she'll, um, she's setting up some bookstore signings cool. and things for the book. And, you know, it may get me back out there speaking again, which I would love to do. So we'll just have to see, you know, see what happens with it. And we were, it allowed me to do some things and stuff that were new that I haven't done before, such as writing the book. Yeah. Um, I did the recording and stuff on the audio book. That's cool. That's, I was going to ask you, I saw it's come out as an audio. Yeah, that's been brilliant. I, I love it when the author or the subject of the book is the one doing the narration. It's the main reason why we decided to go ahead and do that with me is I had got Terry Funk's book. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up around the Funk Brothers. So, I mean, I knew Terry and stuff since I was probably 13 years old. Yeah. And to listen to that book and hear the stories coming from somebody besides Terry just didn't sound right to me. Right. No, fair enough. Fair enough. And that was when we decided stuff, okay, when we do get around to finishing up the book and everything, let's do the audio book on it. And I need to be the one that reads the Yeah reads the book and i got um i don't know if you know who pj black is yeah justin gabriel yeah 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 uh, pj did my introduction for me and he actually read his part oh wow for, that's cool. for me for the audio book i mean cool. i've known him since he's probably eight years old his dad that, was my yeah didn't that i think that opens because he does like a forward or something doesn't he yeah he tells i never knew that so that was yeah he did my for he did my forward on it yeah and then he just um Two three weeks ago, and stuff, we did some stuff together on uh, South African wrestling. Okay, cool. On a, on a project that he's doing. Yeah. So we'll see what what happens with that in the next, you know, the next coming year. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, that was a different experience and stuff. It was, you know, I remembered when it was all over how much I used to hate to read out loud in class and stuff when I was in school. Yeah. <laughs> so, and now look at you. you no. Know. But, but yeah, it was a it was a different experience and stuff. So I mean, I was glad that I that I went through it to see what it was all about. Did you have to shut yourself away in a lot? I I watch people recording audio books in literally just like a cupboard. I went into a studio. Cool. Okay. Here, here in Florida and stuff where I live, and you know, I went into the studio to cut everything. And everything was done through a sound engineer, and cool. you know, I was in a soundproof room and stuff when I was reading everything. Do you you find it harder to read over it rather than writing it? Did it take longer as well? How long did it take to put these things together? Um, I think in total, I read for three hours a day for three days. Okay. Okay. It's not too bad. You know, because the first day and stuff, I wasn't really familiar with what I was doing. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. we yeah. kind of had to go back the second day and re record some stuff from the first day. And, right. You know, where I made some. Uh, mistakes along the way yeah so it was it was a good experience i enjoyed you know i was, I was glad for it to be over <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's the case of putting any book together it's it's lovely doing it when you're in the midst of doing it it's the bit that comes afterwards and then the waiting for it to, just to be out there for people to enjoy um where can right. people, where can people find the book and the audio book amazon there you go. Best place to go is Amazon.com. <laughs> you can just, you know, you can either look up my name or the man behind the makeup and it'll pop up and give you the options and stuff for, for paperback or ebook or audiobook. Brilliant. Brilliant. So and that's even over in uh, in the UK as well. I checked this morning. Amazon UK has got all the all of those as well. Um Okay, good. It's supposed to be there. I think uh we've put stuff out to go to South Africa. Awesome. And a lot of the country, a lot of the countries where I'd wrestled at before yeah. and stuff, we kind of put that out there to where it's available in those Amazon that's cool. links. No, well, that's been be fantastic to see the reception it gets. I've been uh, I've been sharing it wherever I can. I mean, even since I was speaking to you, you know, I I I would tell anyone who would listen, you've got to watch the interview I did with this guy. 
you got to hear his stories because I think I, <laughs> I I knew before I spoke to you, you know, you kind of listed the, the stuff that you you could talk about, all the stuff that you had done in your career, and immediately I was I was hooked in, and I think even more came out when I was speaking to you, and I was like, I don't think many of my guests since or any of my guests since have really because I've already known their story before I've gone into it. I think yours was just one of the most organic kind of fascinating episodes that I've done. So, um, so it's, it's, well, my information wasn't just out there for the whole world to see no. over and over again. I mean, you can find me all, you know, all over the internet and things like that, but it just wasn't your, you know, a Chris Jericho or somebody like, <laughs> like it's, you know, been out no, there for so many years. But you're, you know, what you had achieved, I think without, your name being you know everywhere i think is is fantastic and you've got just as much just as many stories to tell and it it, it it makes me glad really in this day and age that there is a call for diving into all of these kind of um they call like you know outlaw territories weren't they back then right the ones that really they didn't even at the time they wouldn't have got the exposure uh, of the mainstream companies and i know uh vice have really recently done a series on the territories Right. I've been watching that one. That one's been yeah. interesting to watch for me. I don't think I haven't seen it over here in the UK yet. I'm waiting for it because I spoke to Brian Blair earlier this year and he told me about it then that he was working on it. And I, I, I haven't, I'm, I'm waiting for it because it's again, just following on from interviews like, like with yourself and, and with, and with Brian Blair and Scott Casey and that I've learned so much of the, the years and the parts of wrestling throughout the world that I never even knew of. And, um, yeah, it, it's been an entertaining show to watch and stuff. Yeah. And I enjoyed their other show, you know, as well when they did um, Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. Same guys and stuff doing the territory one. Mm. And there was some interesting stuff that, you know, of stories I had heard right. that were completely different than what I had heard is what was told on, tele <laughs> you know, on the show. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of interesting and stuff to see yeah. some of the things I didn't know about situations. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll we'll wait for that one. If anyone who's watching this in the UK knows it's out there, give me a shout because I can't find it, and I just really really want to watch it. But I, I hope you should be able to find it on YouTube. I would think. Okay, yeah, I, have to, I, I remember when Dark Side was on. I I managed to find a couple that way, but then I couldn't find the others or something. You know what it's like. Yeah, I think they've got it all on now and stuff on. I'll have a look. Or you can get the Vice TV app, and it's all on Vice. And there you go. <laughs> it's easy really isn't it when you know how sure yeah <laughs> all right jeff this has been this has been absolutely fantastic to catch up with you and thank you so much for your time um oh it's not a problem and stuff i enjoy our you know our time together and stuff that we've yeah. got to do things i uh it's been great to sort of hear more about you know the side you know, the, the things you've been doing that were not wrestling related but it's fantastic as well to come right back full circle and you know, everyone out there who is who is watching this, anyone who follows me, I'll be sharing the links um, for where you can find Jeff. You're on social media, on uh, oh know, yeah, I'm Facebook on Facebook and Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You're on them all. You're, You're all on. under under Jeff Bearden. So, um, everyone, yeah, get out there and and you've got to read Man Behind the Makeup um, because again, there's so much to be told in that that we haven't touched on um, that is definitely worth any wrestling fan out there you know to uh to give their time to so um sure I'm, everybody go get one <laughs> get a copy it? of it somewhere it's it's <laughs> you know we're running into christmas season perfect time to treat yourself or treat someone else exactly a fan in your life so there we go <laughs> listen jeff all the best with it you know um all, all the success i look forward to there being another follow-up at some point i've um, enjoyed it thanks a lot no no worries take it easy Okay, you take care. See you if you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to like, share, and hit the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep updated about all future shows.